Did you know that you can take a magnesium product that says magnesium glycine or glycinate and it might not actually be fully chelated? In fact, most supplement companies, they can trick you. They can actually say, hey, we have magnesium and glycine, the amino acid, together in a mixer and we're going to say it's magnesium glycine. But is that truly reacted? Is that truly going to get digested into receptors that you want it to impact? Is it actually going to impact total body magnesium stores? and actually help magnesium deficiency overall. Well, we're gonna talk about what a truly chelated mineral is in this webinar. Um, I think it's gonna be about 45 minutes to an hour long, so please tune in. I never want you wondering about, is this mineral good, is this supplement good ever again? I want you to figure out what a truly reacted mineral is, what a chelated mineral really is, and so that you never have to test or guess or figure out what supplement might be right for me. Once you figure out this formation on what a truly chelated mineral is, you'll find the brands that carry this and you'll be able to apply this into your daily supplement needs. So thanks so much for joining us on this webinar on truly chelated minerals and what it means. I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson and thank you for joining us. Hey guys, this is Dr. Robert Fredrickson. Thank you so much for joining me on today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about truly chelated minerals and what to look for in a quality mineral product. I don't want you guys wasting money on inferior forms of vitamins or supplements. And one of the things that I teach people to do is to read the labels and to find out what form of mineral it is because different minerals do different things and a chelated mineral actually has better absorption than a non-chelated mineral. So we're gonna go over that, what to look for, uh, in this webinar. So if you like this, please share it with a friend and let's go ahead and get started. So my name is Dr. Robert Fredrickson. I received my Doctor of Chiropractic in 2013. I'm a functional medicine practitioner and educator um, locally in the Austin and San Antonio area. Also a certified chiropractic sports practitioner, a certified functional medicine provider, certified in vitamins, minerals, and nutraceuticals, strength coach, three different bachelor's degrees, and I look to obtain board certification in clinical nutrition, my diplomat and board certification in 2022 of this fall, and then a former um, collegiate athlete, as you see there. So why does mineral chelation matter? Are you absorbing your minerals fully? Or are you just making expensive stool and urine? How many times have you heard that? Are you making expensive pee? Are you making expensive urine just from taking these vitamins? Well, some minerals, you know, some, some forms of minerals are designed to make us go to the bathroom. Think of magnesium citrate. That is actually a clinically studied form of magnesium to help with constipation. And um, endocrinologists, I'm sorry, gastroenterologists will actually instruct patients to take, you know, 250 to 500 milligrams of magnesium citrate a, before a colonoscopy exam to help clean them out. And so if that's what you're looking for, great. But if you're looking to actually, you know, increase total body magnesium stores with a good quality form, you want to look for something a little bit differently, in my opinion. Magnesium oxide is also a poor form, poorly formed uh, magnesium that actually makes you go to the bathroom as well. So, if you want to, you know, waste money, you know, or if you need to go to the bathroom, that's one thing. But if you want to, you know, get your money's worth and get magnesium stores up in your body, or get iron stores if you need it, or chromium, or any other mineral, selenium, we're going to talk about what to look for in a good quality mineral. So, thank you, thanks so much for joining us. So disclaimers, um, of course, this is for information only. We're not giving you, you know, any kind of health advice in this webinar. We're just, you know, I am just pu uh, purely providing information. I do regularly lecture and do uh, education for nutrition, nutrition companies. I do go in a chiropractic clinic where nutrition products are sold. So just letting those disclaimers be known. I'm also not affiliated or employed with Albion or Balchem Labs, which we'll be talking a lot about the raw materials today. I am not associated with them by any means necessary. I am just promoting... Uh, the raw materials and showing the research that they do and because Albium or Balchem labs are, are raw materials they are in a lot of different products out there especially in the professional or medical grade um, nutrition space so we're going to be talking a lot about them today so chelates melate they're all the same well as you can see from this thing nothing else can be further from the truth and you saw from the introduction that you can have magnesium and glycine and you can put those two you know you can put that mineral and you can put that amino acid in a blender, mix them up, and, ho and hope, they, hope they form together. Hopefully they bond together. But are they actually molecularly bonded at the source? Well, it's really hard to know unless you're actually doing a patented chelated process that Albium Labs does 
every single time. You'll actually see the picture, Albion builds a better chelating mineral in six different stages. And so it starts with the high quality raw material, first and foremost, selecting the quality ligand or the attachment molecule, that's the amino acid, right? Using a patented chelation bonding technology, then proving that it's through the manufacturing process that's actually getting chelated, validating it through special technology, which we'll talk about soon, and then continuing to research and develop this. And so Alvin Labs has you know over 100 different publications, multiple patents on their truly chelated systems. Thorough studies conducted, Alvin has noted as minerals weren't well absorbed in animals. And so they discovered that animals chelate minerals in the body to make them better absorbed naturally. Based on this discovery, Albium labs began pre-chelating minerals before feeding them to animals. And based on Albium's absorption and bioavailability research, it soon became an industry standard for animal health and performance worldwide. The success of its research convinced Albium to move into human nutrition. So in 1970, Albium introduced a line of patented amino acid chelates designed to support human nutrition. Many companies around the world quickly accepted Albion's research and incorporated Albion's amino acid chelates into their own brands of products because Albion Labs doesn't make their own products. They, what they do is they are raw material suppliers. So they will partner with companies, professional grade companies, you know, first that actually want the best raw materials. So they will go to Albion Labs, get that best form of magnesium or iron or chromium whatever and they will get that into the products and so they have a ton of different research behind them some of the best mineral chelates out there and as we talked about album is the owner of over 130 different patents and has participated in over 190 scientific studies to date not all chelates are created equal and so in the nutrition space i'm constantly seeing new companies come out there that are say oh it's a magnesium glycinate it's a magnesium malate um but is it truly chelated well, unless it's, you know, truly something that's from Albion Labs, now now it's called ba Balchem, actually, you don't really know. And so some things that Albium does differently that makes their minerals um, unique is the quality. One, they're hypoallergenic. They're vegetarian and vegan friendly. They're non-GMO. They're nutritionally functional. Fully chelated minerals, chemically validated, and clinically researched. And almost all published research um, today in PubMed on mineral amino acid chelates has been done on albium mineral chelates specifically. So if it says it was magnesium glycinate, uh, it's probably a good chance that it was actually done on a albium labs mineral. Because you want to have actual published data on a good quality mineral, you don't want to have any um, you don't have you don't have any differences in mineral quality from that alone. So some industry manufacturers use the term mineral chelate more casually. And in my opinion, it gives consumers a false understanding of what a chelate is and implies that there is no difference. At the cost of hundreds of thousands of dollars, Albion has conducted clinical studies that prove it produces reproducible, effective, and absorbable chelated, chelated minerals. It is extremely rare that a company will prove that the product is fully reacted or even that there's an effective chelation process that has taken place. Again, they might say it's magnesium glycinate, but do you really know that? So how do you know? Well, Trax is called the Real Amino Acid Chelate System. You'll typically find this on a on the back of a mineral bottle or the back of a supplement bottle. You'll actually find the Trax registered brand. This is the guarantee that Alvey Minerals is using that they are using Alvey Minerals in this product, and that it is what it says it is. So they're building that trust and that transparency because they're actually using a quality vetted mineral. So the six stage process that Albium Labs does to ensure that their minerals are fully reacted or fully chelated is this. First, they're testing minerals for contamination. This is exceeding the industry standards, third party testing, etc. They're selecting quality organic ligands. So these are typically things that the mineral is bonded to. Like, for example, organic amino acids, glycine, bonded to minerals during chelation. They're using a patented chelation bonding technology, which results in a neutrally charged molecule. They're employing proven manufacturing processes, like flash drying the solution to prevent degradation, which is basically if something degradates, it's losing its potency over time. So if they're doing a flash dry um, solution, they can ensure potency and make sure that you're actually getting the potency that's actually on the label. Because sometimes products will say 300 milligrams of this mineral on the label, 
But as that product sits on the shelf, it could be less than that. So if your product is actually less than what it says to begin with, you're getting a lot less as that product sits on the shelf. So again, they are validating that their um, chelated minerals are what they say they are using advanced testing measurements, infrared fingerprinting, for example. And they're continuing to research and develop new, truly innovative uh, mineral developments and chelation processes. True mineral chelates with covalent bonds. The, so this is actually what it looks like. So we actually have our mineral. I, I'm gonna use the example of magnesium, but this could be iron. This could be chromium, selenium, zinc, etc. So what you have is you actually have a, a mineral, then you have a double bond. And so this is um, a unique thing because you actually have two molecules. So sometimes I get asked the question is, what is the bi in front of the glycine mean? Well, means bi means two. So we're getting chelation is a natural process in the gut. Fetils, so when something is truly chelated in the gut, it facilitates transports of minerals across the intestinal membrane. So albumin has created pre-chelated uh, pre minerals to mimic this process. So large, partic large particles cannot easily pass through the intestinal wall. Many mineral products on the market have molecular weights that are too large. The intestinal absorption pathway of an amino acid chelate is different than the absorption of minerals from inorganic salts. Amino acid uh, chelates do not require digestion because they are not um, disassociated in the stomach prior to absorption due to the size because they're very small size. So here we have an example here. We have ferric sulfate, we have an iron sulfate. You'll see those are big molecules. So albium's glycine amino acid chelate is officially absorbed across the intestinal wall and is small enough to be transported right into the cell itself because of its small nature. So this chart is kind of hard to read, but I'm gonna read it to you. So I always get asked is what form is right for me? What gets the best absorption? So there's something called insoluble, insoluble, or inorganic salts. So kind of the worst or the bottom of the food chain for the worst absorption would be the oxides, the carbonates, and the hydroxides. Sometimes I get asked the question, what is a hydroxide? Well, it's just um, oxygen attached to oxide or, yeah. And so then you have a step above that is the soluble inorganic salts. You have the chlorides, you have the sulfates. Then you have the soluble organic salts, which are the following lactates, citrates, gluconates, orotates, magnesium lactate, citrate, gluconate, orotate, etc. And then you have the soluble organic complex at the very, very top where the green arrow, these are the best absorbers. So these are glycinates, so magnesium glycinate, for example, or magnesium malate, for example. At the bottom here, you'll see a magnesium, it says is al albium dimagnesium malate. You'll see the tracks, magnesium bisglycinate, indicating it's a truly chelated mineral that's actually getting absorbed fully intact and has the best bioavailability. And so some individuals have experienced this, and I've heard it so many times, when they consume a poorly absorbed mineral salt, for example, magnesium oxide, they experience GI side effects, gas, bloating, diarrhea, and constipation. To ensure this doesn't happen, by getting a good quality mineral complex with an amino acid, glycine or malate, threonate, for example, the chelation process produces a neutral mineral compound, which has no electrical charge, neutral pH. The lack of an ionic charge results in a product free of GI side effects because this mineral is fully intact and it will not disassociate. Sometimes when you get disassociation in the bowels, it causes ionization in the gut, which causes the bowels to flush. So if you're constipated and need this, that's good. But if you have, someone, if you have a lot of IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, you wouldn't want this at all. This would actually cause more GI side effects. So absorption comparison of mineral salts versus mineral chelates in the intestines. I love this chart, okay? So this is kind of just showing you in blue what a mineral chelate is doing, and in the gray it's showing you what a general mineral salts or inorganic salt is doing. So the calcium carbonate, the magnesium oxide, the ferrous sulfates require acidity and they're getting absorbed through passive absorption, which means some getting, is getting absorbed but not getting actually transported through specific peptide receptors. Some is getting broken apart by the stomach acidity, and the rest is getting ionized in the lower parts of the small intestine, going to the large intestine, 
where it'll be dumped out. Well, if you have a mineral chel uh, chelate, it is pH stable, so it doesn't require the acidity. Um, it's going to go through the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum, then to the duodenum, where most of our microvilli are. And this is where active absorption happens. We're looking at the blue chart right there. Active transport of amino acids rapidly pulls minerals into the body, does not require an acidic environment, and you have more widespread absorption in uh, throughout the entire duodenum. This is, what, this is what, what you want. Here's a great chart on just some differences in a chelated absorption versus some of the other ones. So albium, iron, bisglycinate, chelate, ferrous shell is a trademark. Four times greater, greater absorption than ferrous sulfate. Albium, magnesium, bisglycinate, chelate, up to five times greater absorption than magnesium oxide. Albium, zinc, bisglycinate, chelate, up to 1.4 times greater absorption than zinc gluconate. Allium calcium bisglycinate chelate up to 1.5 to 2 times greater absorption than calcium citrate and calcium carbonate. And I actually have the comparison studies below for reference. So anemia is a condition in which red blood cells lack sufficient amounts of iron. Without enough iron, red blood cells cannot carry oxygen. And so if you are anemic, you would probably want to take a chelated iron. In fact, a a story of mine is that I had a pharmacist that I was talking to. She was 32 weeks pregnant, severely anemic, and she was taking a prescription-grade uh, prenatal, which had iron in it, of course. But she was still anemic, and she asked me, hey, you know, what if I took a, a chelated iron? And so I suggested that she do that, and within four weeks, her, her blood levels for, for iron were back to normal, Okay. And so she took something similar to that chart right there on the supplement fast box. You'll see a fair gel, ferrous bisglycinate chelate. So that means this iron is chelated. And on this yellow chart, we actually found I found this online. This is a ferrous sulfate. So it's 65 milligrams, but it's poorly um, poorly absorbed. And it, so iron, for example, is known to cause constipation. It's known to have GI side effects. But these other chelated forms, like the one on the left there, the white box, is actually shown to have a better absorption with little to no GI side effects. And you don't have to take it with vitamin C because it's naturally chelated, or it is chelated, it has way better absorption. Talking about iron deficiency associated symptoms, some things to be aware of if you're iron deficient might be extreme fatigue, weakness, pale skin, chest pain, fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, headache, dizziness, cold hands and feet, soreness of tongue, and brittle nails, unusual cravings for, you know, non-nutritive substances, dirt, for example, poor appetite, and so forth. Here we have a few studies on the pure chelated um, iron from Albion Labs. Ferrous bisglycinate, 25 milligrams iron is, is as effective as ferrous sulfate, 50 milligrams iron, um, in iron deficiency and anemia during pregnancy. So we just talked about my friend who is pregnant. She got back to normal within that same dose. And so basically what they're saying here is that 25 milligrams of iron is double the potency of something that's um, not chelated without the without the side effects. So would you rather have take less and get a better effect without le uh, you know better GI effects and still raise blood levels? I would. And so just that comparison before it showed you know 29 milligrams and 65. That'd be a pretty equal dose to this one as well. Iron deficiency in children diagnosed with ADHD, attention deficit disorder. They found that serum ferritin was found to be inversely associated with baseline inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, and total ADHD symptom scores. Low ferritin levels, or low iron, um, in 68 children with ADHD found that um, were found to have significant higher incidence of sleep wake transition disorders as compared to subjects with higher serum fer ferritin levels, meaning uh, we should do more trials with iron supplementation in association with ADHD um, for abnormal sleep, motor activity in children. Again, we know about the unexplained fatigue with non-anemic uh, women. This double-blind placebo-controlled trial looked at that exact same thing with iron supplementation. So now let's transition from iron to magnesium. So I've, I've talked extensively about magnesium in a lot of my videos and a lot of my posts. You've probably seen it before if you followed me before, but chelated magnesium versus non-chelated. So here on the left, you'll see here it's a blend. I like this blend a lot, um, but I'm not going to mention any names here, okay? 
this for education purposes only, but this one is a dimagnesium malate, chelated malate. Then it's got a magnesium citrate, which is chelated. And then they also have the magnesium lysinate, glycinate chelate, which is the chelate version. Burst is a very popular magnesium product out there that you've probably seen before. Um, this one is a carbonate, which is on the very, very low side of absorption. They, and this company claims that when you mix the carbonate into water with citric acid, that it magically bonds to magnesium citrate. But we also know that citrate is, you know, readily disassociated in the gut as well. So this, so the product on the right is good for constipation, but it's not going to elevate magnesium levels or stores in the body as effectively. And we're going to talk more about this right now. Magnesium, magnesium is a mineral used by every organ in the body. Some estimate that up to 80% of Americans are deficient. Magnesium bisglycinate was chosen for its proven enhanced absorption and for its tolerance, causing less, um, less laxative effect potential than other forms of magnesium, such as oxide, which I do not recommend. Magnesium oxide is very poor absorbed, only 48% based on the studies that you read. So magnesium chelate versus non-chelated forms. So here we have that magnesium chelate is or we're talking about usually magnesium glycinate is 8.8 .8 times greater absorbed than magnesium oxide, 5.6 times greater absorbed than magnesium sulfate, and 2.3 uh, times greater absorbed than magnesium carbonate. And so what decreases magnesium in the body? Some things that people don't realize that we're constantly depleting our magnesium stores. We need to eat a, a diet rich in magnesium. And a lot of times if you're deficient in magnesium, you're gonna have a hard time getting out of deficiency by diet alone. So I think supplements do play a big part, especially magnesium, because 80% of Americans, up to 80% of Americans are currently deficient. And so what decreases the magnesium? Well, levels are decreased by excessive intake of alcohol, too much salt in the diet, coffee, diuretics, phosphoric acid found in sodas, diets high in calcium, um, and people taking just calcium only supplements can actually deplete magnesium stores and also high stress levels. The first mineral that actually gets used up or gets used during um, stress is magnesium. So if you're going through a lot of stress, a lot of cortisol, a lot of catecholamine release is having in your body, you need more magnesium to balance it out. Magnesium deficiency, some of the signs here are this, hyper excited excitability, muscular symptoms, cramps, twitching, tightness, fatigue, loss of appetite, apathy, inability to show emotion, Confusion, brain fog, insomnia, trouble sleeping, general irritability, mood changes, poor memory, attention span, rapid heartbeat, migraines, and anxiety, to name a few. Magnesium also plays an important role in carbohydrate metabolism, and its deficiency may worsen insulin resistance. So if you're on a high-carb diet or eat a lot of carbs, you need to be you know, getting enough magnesium in your diet and through supplementation to process those carbohydrates. Here we have a few studies on magnesium. Magnesium improves the beta cell function to compensate variation of insulin sensitivity. In the, in the conclusions here, we saw that um, 2.5 um, grams daily improves the ability of beta cells to compensate for variations in insulin sensitivity in non-diabetic individuals. And that's a lot of magnesium. Uh, magnesium intake in relation to systemic inflammation, insulin resistance, and the incidence of diabetes. Um, this is a pretty large study of 4,497 Americans aged 18 through 30 who had no diabetes at baseline. Um, they did a 20-year follow-up, and they found that magnesium intake was inversely associated with incidence of diabetes after adjustment for potential co-founders. They found that the groups with the lowest magnesiums actually had significantly um, Correlated levels with inflammation indicated by high sensitivity CRP, interleukin-6, fibrinogen, and HOMA-IR, which is a insulin sensitivity markers. And if you had you know, bigger or better magnesium levels over the 20-year span, you actually had lower inflammation and lower insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. markers. Magnesium supplementation dramatically improves met metabolic profiles of metabolically obese and normal weight individuals. Um, so in this study, they looked at um, 47 metabolically obese patients. They were either given oral magnesium supplementation or placebo. And, of course, they found that people who received magnesium had lower blood pressure, lower um, insulin resistance, 
lower glucose, lower triglyceride levels um, than those compared to the placebo group. And so the authors concluded oral magnesium supplementation improves the metabolic profile and blood pressure of metabolic disease patients. Calcium. So you don't hear me talk about calcium too much because I do believe we get enough in our diet. But if you are at risk for or have osteoporosis or osteopenic based on a DEXA scan, or if your doctor's told you to take calcium, please take the correct form of calcium. And so we're going to talk about chelated calcium versus some of the inner, you know, inorganic forms like calcium carbonate. I don't recommend calcium carbonate. It is a poor absorbed form. It's actually what drywall is made out of. So it's very, very um, it's like a rock salt, right? It's just very hard, porous. It's good as an antacid, but it's not really good at getting into the bone. So the importance of calcium is pretty obvious. If you're consuming a calcium supplement and it has little effect on improving the body's calcium balance, there's pretty much no reason to ingest it. So using a good quality man- uh, calcium is key. And of course, make sure that you're getting your other minerals like vitamin D, magnesium, and vitamin K2, because they all help facilitate calcium into the bone. I've done several videos on this in the past. So calcium carbonate's absorption profile is less than 10%. Albium's calcium chelate absorption profile exceeds 44%. Phosphorus is stored in the bones as tricalcium phosphate, hydroxyapatite. And this is the form found in re- reactive calcium or you know reactive calcium supplements. Okay, So this is applying the ideal ratio of calcium to phosphorus and it has a resistance to bone shock and compression. So it's actually going to give calcium to the bone. So when we say reacted, we usually mean chelated, both synonymous, okay? Calcium and vitamin D in the treatment and prevention of osteoporosis, the actual dilemma. So calcium lowers the fracture risk when given together with vitamin D. And several studies have shown that calcium alone doesn't work as well unless it is with vitamin D. So this, kind of, this study shows exactly what I'm talking about. Comparative effectiveness of drug treatments to prevent uh, fragility fractures. So there's tons of different studies, com- you know, using calcium and vitamin D together. And so now you'll see a lot of vitamin D supplements actually do vitamin K2 together because vitamin D releases calcium from the parathyroid glands. Calcium is then free floating through the arteries, needs to know where to go. Vitamin K2 redirects it through two en- enzymes, matrix GLA protein and osteocalcin to go back to the bones with the help of magnesium. So calcium on its own, not the best choice in my opinion we should be pairing it with other things like vitamin d and so balchem corporation acquired albium lab so you might see balchem instead of albium i know i talked a lot about albium chelate forms but if you see that on label just know it's the same thing and so where to find products or companies who use albium labs minerals well only you know the best some of the best quality companies that want the best quality materials are going to be using these are materials. And so some professional grade brands, you've probably heard me talk about this before, maybe you haven't, but Orthomolecular Products is a practitioner only brand. can only be found in doctor's offices or independent pharmacies. Can't be found online. Don't go to Amazon for this product, but they're going to have all, you know, fully reacted, fully chelated minerals. Zymogen designs for health, Medica, etc. If your provider carries vitamins in their office, you know, ask if they carry some of these brands. There's other brands that carry these same raw materials as well. And then if you're out in retail and you, and you don't have access to an independent pharmacy or doctor's office, and just become a smart consumer. Start reading labels. Start saying, what does this label say? Does it say Trax on it? Does it say bisglycinate? Does it say dimagnesium? Those are some good indicators that it's, that it's actually chelated. If it just says magnesium glycinate, you got to ask some questions. You know, where are they getting the mineral from? Can I do some more research online about it? But if, if you don't have time for that, you know, look for a good quality brand that's getting the best source raw materials possible. Thank you so much for joining me today on today's webinar. I hope it was insightful. I know I went over a lot of complex topics, but to sum it down is when looking for a good quality mineral, you want to look for a company that's doing things the right way. You want to be finding a mineral that actually has true chelation, that's actually going through the steps that are necessary to ensure that magnesium is bonded to the amino acid, for example, or to the Krebs cycle intermediate to make sure that you're getting the absorption into your body. Because I don't want you guys taking a supplement and saying it doesn't work, especially magnesium. If you're deficient in magnesium, I want you to take a supplement that's gonna help you get out of the deficiency along with eating a, or taking a supplement that's gonna help you as well along the way. Of course, diet matters. Diet, managing stress levels, 
managing your exercise or getting more exercise and getting you know the pr- appropriate lifestyle signals into your body are key. And I think taking supplements when necessary can make a huge difference in your health. And so thank you so much for following me today on this webinar. If you found it helpful, please leave a comment to wherever you're viewing it from. Follow me on social media outlets where I do shorter videos, especially on TikTok. Usually my TikTok is filled with magnesium type videos. My Instagram, my personal Instagram is Dr. Robert Fredrickson. Um, business Instagram is Fredrickson Health Solutions. My YouTube, Dr. Robert Fredrickson. Facebook, Fredrickson Health Solutions. My <coughs> website is FredricksonHealthSolutions.com. You guys, it was a pleasure today. And hope you see you guys in the next video.